Hey guys, welcome back to Raya's Tie-Dye. So today I'm going to show you how to tie-dye a reverse dye swirl t-shirt. So all you're gonna need for that is some bleach and water, a uh, black t-shirt, and we will be dyeing it also. So if you have um, any of your Procyon dyes or even a tulip kit, if you don't have any of that stuff, I went ahead and put down uh, links in my description box below. So if you don't have anything that you need for this video, they're conveniently right down there. If you click on it, it'll take you right to it. You can just have it shipped to your door. Easy peasy. Anyways, so if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so now because we're doing this awesome bleach dye swirl and you're not gonna wanna miss what we're doing next because we have actually bleach dye jeans which we're also gonna add color to after we bleach dye them. And we have lots of other stuff coming up so you're not gonna wanna miss that. So once you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and then set it to all and you'll be notified every single time we post a video. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so this is just a damp black t-shirt. It has not been soaked in soda ash yet because we need to do the bleach part first. Um, so we're just gonna do a reverse dye swirl on this one. And I am gonna use my hemostat. You can use a fork or your fingers if you want, but this one just helps get a tighter center. So you're just gonna wanna pick the center of your t-shirt and pull a little bit of it up so you can pinch it with your hemostat or whatever you're using and then you can start twisting and all i do is line use my hand to kind of make sure the pleats aren't going too crazy um, they don't have to be super perfect or anything like that but while you're twisting if you notice any of them popping up um, I just kind of try to work with them so they stay down and they don't overtake the center. So just keep working with your pleats over here. You'll see some of them pop up a lot. But like I said, if you're not um, doing this for customer order or anything like that and you're doing it for fun it really doesn't have to be perfect so if you're having a hard time with it don't get discouraged it's not it's not like that big of a deal but you know for somebody that's got to do customer orders and things um, most people want you to take the extra precaution so that you know that you're getting a really good swirl So this last couple parts is the sleeves and I'm just kind of pulling it with my hand because I don't want them to be bunched up in any way. And this is the bottom of the shirt. Pull that closer. So now, your spiral is pretty much ready for rubber bands. So I'm just going to band it with the hemostat in there. Um, I do have hemostats, um, rubber bands, all of that stuff in the links down below. I know I mentioned that in the intro, but just in case you skip through the video, you know that they're there. You can click on those, they'll take it take you right to them on Amazon. Um, which is pretty handy. So I am gonna try to take this out. So when you are pulling this out, I put my finger right down where it's been holding on to and try to split it apart up here so you're not putting a hole in your shirt. And you want to push down the fabric with your finger while you're rocking this back and forth. Otherwise, you're going to pull the center of your spiral right out. So that is done. 
So we have a nice, pretty swirl with a tight center. You know, it's hard to see, but you can see the really good ridges in there. So now we can bleach dye this. So basically I have a bottle and it's a 16 ounce bottle, but I filled it seven ounces of bleach and seven ounces of water. That way I had room to shake it. Um, so literally do half and half for your bleach. And then, so what we're gonna do is we're going to dye one pie piece and leave the rest of it black. We're gonna bleach, excuse me, we're gonna bleach that part. And then we're gonna do both sides and then we're gonna let it sit. Don't let it sit too long or else you're gonna start having holes in your shirt. Um, the bleach will eat your shirt. So leave it for like 10 minutes, see if you like the color of your bleach. Um, if it's not light enough for you, I would try another five and just go by five minute increments, but I wouldn't leave it on for more than like a half hour. Um, and then when you are ready to get the bleach off, um, I would set this on a baker's rack or something like that and let the water just run on top of it and rinse it for a while. I would say let the water run and go do something that you got to get done, you know, dishes or anything like that. Um, Cause you're going to want to try to get some of the bleach out of there. Um, and then we're going to neutralize the bleach so that it, it does not work on the shirt anymore. Um, so when you neutralize it, it's, I'm using hydrogen peroxide and water. Um, so, Yes, that's hydrogen peroxide like you use on cuts and scrapes and things. Um, but the reason why you do that is because the bleach is never going to stop working on your shirt. So even though you wash it six or seven times or anything like that, your bleach is still eating your shirt. So you're going to have holes in it eventually and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. But when you neutralize it with the hydrogen peroxide and the water, um, it makes it stop working. So you won't have that problem. Um, especially, you definitely want to do that if this is a customer order or anything like that. Um, so let's put the bleach on it and then let it sit. All right, you guys, so I just dyed one pie piece, or not dyed, sorry. I used bleach on one piece, and you can see there's bleach starting to turn right there and right down here. Um, I did that on both sides. Now I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and see what it looks like. Um, if it's not quite what I wanted or if there's still black in there, I'm gonna reapply some of the bleach and then let it sit for another 10 minutes. Um, so we'll be back so I could show you exactly what that looks like. All right, you guys, this was about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I do still have some blotches in here, um, little black blotches. And if you look down in here, you can see there's some dark spots. So just to kind of speed up the process a little bit, I'm going to go over it with a little bit of a uh, 100% um, bleach just to help get those blotches out and it'll be a little bit quicker um, after i do that i'm going to let it sit for another 10 minutes and then after i do that we're going to put this in the sink and let the water run over it um for probably for like 15 minutes um and then i'll start squeezing it but i don't want to ruin my swirl um this is going to go in my hydrogen peroxide neutralizing um, bath for it so that the bleach can stab doing its job and then which just a reminder nine cups of water and one cup of hydrogen peroxide 
Um, you can double that if you need more. Um, and then after you do that, we want the swirl to be intact so that when we put color here, we're not trying to figure out our swirl again. So I'm going to get started on that. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make your hydrogen peroxide mix. Um, it's really simple. So before I turn the water on, I'm just gonna tell you, you need nine cups of water. That's kind of the base. Um, you can double it if you have to put two projects in your bucket, but you can use a bucket, you can use a tub, a uh, tote, whatever. But nine cups of water. I don't think it matters whether it's cold or hot. I've never heard anybody say that there is a difference. Um, so I'm just going to do cold and I'm going to get started because I don't know if you can hear me with the water on. All right, so in this case, we're just doing one shirt. So that's more than enough. Um, that's just enough. It's literally like probably right there. So it'll just cover the top of the shirt. Um, if not, you can always flip it over. But now we're going to put our cup of hydrogen peroxide in there. I just bought this big old bottle. So you want one whole cup. Ooh! It's my clumsiness coming out. This will neutralize your bleach, so it'll make your bleach stop working. So that if you are doing like a customer order if or, or if it's a t-shirt that you really want to last a long time, um, the bleach will not be able to keep um, basically bleaching your shirt still. So you won't get the holes and your bleach won't eat your shirt all the way through. Uh, so I'm just going to use my measuring cup and stir it around a little bit. And then that's ready for your shirt. So all you have to do is when you're done rinsing your bleach out, um, try to keep it tied still so that you don't have to try to figure out the swirl again to match um, your bleach lines. But rinse the bleach out, squeeze it a little bit, and then once you have that rinsed, set it right in here for about 20 minutes. And then when you're done with that, I would rinse that again, just like you did with the bleach. And then I would soak it in soda ash, especially if you're gonna use Procyon dyes. If you're using Tulip, it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but if you're using Dharma, Grateful dyes, um, custom colors even. If you use any of those kinds of dyes, you definitely have to soak it in soda ash or else your dye is not going to stay. Um, it will, but not like you want it. You want bright, bright colors and it just won't work without soda ash. So make sure you do that too. So it has to soak in soda ash for at least 20 minutes. Um, it'll be tied up in this case too. So when you do get it out, you'll have to wring it out a little bit, try to keep your swirl intact if you can. I'm gonna try like always so um, go ahead and put your shirt in there when you're ready. So then after we rinse the bleach off we then put it in the hydrogen peroxide mix for 20 minutes and then we took it from there we rinsed it again and then we threw it in soda ash. Um, so this has soaked in soda ash so that our Procyon dyes will work um, and today I have lemon yellow, emerald green, Chinese red, and seashell blue that I'm going to do. So I'm thinking I'm going to do green, blue, red, yellow on both sides. So just repeat it on the other side. And then 
just like all of our tie dye, I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours and then we'll be able to rinse it in cold water until the water runs clear and then we can reveal it. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so we have our reverse dye swirl here with blue, green, red, and yellow. And I think it turned out pretty awesome. I can't wait to see. But while I'm opening this up, make sure you check out my new website. It's www.riastiedye.com, spelled just like our YouTube channel name. Um, that stuff is added weekly or as I can get to it. It is kind of just me. So if you need anything, you can message me on Facebook and on my website. You can email me also if there's something that you're looking for in particular. So this is a women's fitted extra large t-shirt and that looks awesome. So it's got the yellow and the red, which I kind of overlap to make the orange. And then I overlap the red and the blue. Hopefully when I wash this, you'll see a little bit of purple in there and then green on the very outside. And I love that it's on the sleeve too. And then the back looks the exact same. Looks pretty awesome. All right, you guys, so thank you so much for watching. Coming up next, we have bleach dye jeans. And check out my website, because you're not gonna wanna miss all the stuff that goes on there. I do stuff that is on my YouTube channel, just so you know. And then you can also do the comment shout out. Comment anything that you want to see me do. And if you get picked, we will mention your name and your suggestion, and we will do that video for you. But, Come back next time for more awesome stuff like this. Thanks for watching.